Hey guys, my name is Em. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're ready to see me read for 24 hours straight. So let's pick out my TBR and then I will get into the readathon. You can see from the title of today's video, it is going to be a 24 hour readathon vlog. I am so excited. I love 24 hour thons, they're just my favorite videos to film. And I'm so excited about this one because I probably have the most ambitious TBR that I've ever had in a video before. And I'm determined to get through as many of these as I physically can. So, as you may have seen, I tried out something a little new with picking my TBR. I actually went through my shelves with you and picked off the books that I wanted to read and then showed you kind of like which books I was picking. Here is the incredibly large stack of books that I want to read in 24 hours. I know that I'm not gonna be able to read all of them before you think that I have completely lost it. I know that I'm not gonna be able to read all of them but I feel like I might be able to read a good few because I am doing the timer method for this readathon which means I will be starting a 24-hour timer when the readathon begins so yeah I'll be stopping the timer every time that I'm stopping reading and like taking breaks and stuff. I will actually be getting 24 hours of solid reading. So it is currently 12.34 in the afternoon but I'm planning to start this readathon at 1 and the book that I'm going to be starting with is The Confidence of Wildflowers by Macalia Smeltzer. I only received this book yesterday after seeing so much hype for it literally everywhere and I'm very excited to continue. I did start this already so I am 160 pages in. I am so excited to finish this book to see what I think of this book. This is like a small town single dad age gap romance. Literally think of a romance trope it's probably in this book. I'm hoping to start this at one and then just read for as long as I possibly can. Hopefully finish it today. Like I think I should be able to. There is a lot left but I do think I will be able to. So yeah, I am very very excited to read this book and to bring you through my thoughts. So for the remaining 20 minutes before the readathon, I think I'm just going to quickly clear up my room a little bit, get it cozy so that I can sit and read for the rest of the day. So let's just get into it but if I'm listening to an audiobook, I will be listening to Finley Donovan Knocks Him Dead which is the sequel to Finley Donovan is Killing It, which I finished last week and loved. So that is the audiobook I will be listening to if I do need an audiobook, but I'm going to be starting with this one. Let's ignore the fact that literally 90% of this stack is romance. So yeah, I will come back to you when the readathon is beginning. I am so excited. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Okay, it is 1pm. It is readathon time. I am ready to read, but I've started organizing my room now, which I don't know why I decided to do this at the most inconvenient time. So I'm actually going to start with Finley Donovan Knocks Him Dead while I'm cleaning. hour one update it is now 2 p.m and i have actually been reading a lot so i cleaned for this entire hour and i was listening to the audiobook for finley donovan knocks him dead and i've actually made it quite far in so i don't know like what percentage or anything because audible doesn't tell you but i have two hours 14 minutes left on 2.5 speed which is the speed that i'm listening at so i will hopefully manage to finish this book within this readathon i don't think i'm going to be finishing it right now because now that i've finished cleaning i kind of want to sit and physically read something so i have paused my timer we currently have 46 minutes of reading in i did a stopwatch as well so that I could like count up how long each book takes me. I think today if I could finish The Confidence of a Wildflower and Finlay Donovan that would be successful for today and then tomorrow I can tackle into the other books. So yeah hour one successful. Okay so it's actually like five minutes later but I thought of something that I wanted to say that I forgot to say so I'm gonna make that update but I'm also about to paint my nails and I don't know whether to go for like this hot pink 
or a white color. I might go for hot pink, you know, why not? Be a girl boss. The update that I wanted to say about Finley is that I am liking it. I'm really interested in the mystery element. They're getting more used to mysterious things happening and like weird things happening. It's a lot more interesting because you're like really intrigued and also like the plot just keeps thickening. But, and there is a but, the thing that I'm not enjoying about this book is that there's a romance in it. Usually I love romance in books, you know me, I literally have like nine romances on this TBR, but in a mystery book sometimes I just don't think it's needed and there's also kind of like a, a love triangle in a way, so I don't know how I feel about that 100%. You know, Finley is a girl boss and the fact that she has like two love interests is amazing for her, but I just don't care about the romance because it's like I want to know who's killing all these people and who the head belongs to. I don't care about your lawyer boyfriend, okay? I don't. So that's kind of like where I'm at. That's the one thing that I'm not interested in. And it's like, it's not a huge, huge part of the book. Like, I can still enjoy the book. Unless one of the guys in the romance ends up being the killer, that would be good. That is all I have to say for right now. I'm gonna go paint my nails. Hi, besties. Okay, it is now 5.20 in the evening and I have just finished my first book of the readathon. I have been reading for two hours and three minutes, but I have just finished my first book of the readathon, which was Finley Donovan and Knocks Him Dead. So I have now read 368 pages. I have a few thoughts on this book and honestly I'm not really sure yet of what I'm gonna rate it. The thing is I found this with the first book as well and I didn't really notice it until Bisma pointed it out and now I really noticed it in this book. Throughout the whole book the stakes are so high, things keep happening, there's really dangerous people involved in this book. Like this is literally about this woman who has gotten involved with the mafia. So like she's in a lot of danger, people are in a lot of danger, the stakes are high. But the endings of the book end up being the most anti climactic things in the world and I'm really disappointed in the ending because all through it I was like oh my god there's gonna be this huge betrayal and we're gonna find out somebody is involved and it's gonna like change the whole course of the series and I'm not gonna spoil anything but I'm just kind of like disappointed in the ending and the twist and there is going to be a third book it's coming out next January and I have a feeling that like the plot twist of that book is gonna be the plot twist that I saw coming from the start of the first book and if that is the case I'm kind of like, yeah, okay, but we could have done that in the first or second book and then had a new plot twist for the third one. So I'm really unsure of what to rate this because I did enjoy it. Don't get me wrong. I really did enjoy it. I think the mystery aspect is amazing. Vero, she is the ride or die bitch that we all need. But I just think it's the ending that's just like, oh, like we got through all of that for nothing. So I think I'm probably gonna give this a 3.5 star which is just a bit lower than the first one. I'm so conflicted because I actually enjoyed the mystery of this book more than the first one, but the ending of the second one was so much worse than the ending of the first one. I don't know. I think I'm gonna give this like a 3.5 star, but my eyes are exhausted and that's kind of crazy because I was literally listening to it on audio. I don't even know why I'm tired. So I'm probably gonna take a little break because my eyes need a rest and then I'm gonna continue reading The Confidence of Wildflowers. I'm currently on chapter 23, which is page 161. I wanna get up to like at least like page 300 today, which I feel like should be possible. But I'm gonna stop talking right now. I'll get back to you later when I continue reading. Okay, it is now almost 11 p.m. and I haven't read a single page since I spoke to you last, but I've edited my video for tomorrow now, which honestly took so long because I needed to do that and I had to edit it from scratch. So now we're ready to get back into reading. So I'm gonna open back up my timer. I'm gonna get back to reading. I'm not even gonna set like a goal for myself. Honestly, I'm just gonna try read as much as I can. I've read for two hours and three minutes. So that's how long it took me to read my first book. Let's see how long it will take me to read this book. Okay, let's go. I just read the best scene that I have ever read in a romance book before. This was the cutest thing I've ever witnessed. So I don't even think I've told you what this book is about, but this basically follows our main character, Salem, who's 18, and this is a small town romance and an age gap romance. And a new grumpy neighbor moves in next door and he has a son, and then she ends up like babysitting for the son. Basically, that's what this book is about, but there's also a lot of dark topics in this book, so definitely 
do look up trigger warnings if you're interested in reading this. I just read the cutest scene, but basically her boyfriend got tickets for them to go to this concert that she really loves, but then he bailed on her last minute. So the neighbor is like, I don't want to see you upset. He drives her to Boston to go to the concert and he's like, I'll go to the concert with you. Okay, but it gets better because we have the one bed trope because they arrive at the hotel that she was meant to stay in with her boyfriend. So obviously they only had one bed and then they like get to the concert and she's like, fuck, I left the tickets back in the hotel room. Like, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna have to miss half the concert because we're gonna have to go back for them. And he's like, no, no, nay, nay, give me two seconds. He walks over to the like sold out ticket place. I don't know what you call it. And he comes back with two pit tickets. He spends thousands to get them pit tickets. I can't believe that I just read that. This is the standard, guys, okay? Fellas, listen up. This is the standard. And then, like, while she's, like, going to find their place or whatever, she, like, looks at this hoodie in the gift shop. He goes and buys it for her along with a water bottle. And then he holds her bag for the night so that she can dance and sing and be happy to her heart's content. I can't contain my excitement over that because that is just the sweetest thing. And I just love when, like, a couple has like sweet cute moments and they're not even a couple right now that's the thing like they've barely spoken to each other that much it's clear that they like each other obviously i'm living for the tropes in this book i think that this might just be the most perfectly written romance book of all times i'm very excited to continue but yeah that is all i have to say for right now i'm obsessed i'm obsessed Okay, I'm on page 196 and I just literally laughed out loud for like five minutes at a scene and then I had like this moment where I was like wow I'm really like sitting in my room at midnight laughing over a piece of paper <laughs> but this is so funny I am obsessed with this book oh my god I just I love it so much okay so I'm on page 238 and I have a teeny complaint she does have a boyfriend and she has just made a move on there cheating in books is not something i like obviously but there are some circumstances where you're kind of like you don't really care because like the boyfriend's an asshole or something i'm kind of mad at salem because like her boyfriend was really really nice and he kind of didn't do anything wrong and it's totally okay that she doesn't want to be with him anymore like that's fine but just break up with him babe like just break up with him you know what i mean like you didn't need to get with somebody else to confirm the fact that you wanted to break up with him i don't know it just felt like really weird so i've been reading for two hours 57 minutes probably not going to be able to finish this book tonight but i want to get to page 300 then there's like this coachella live stream that i kind of want to watch because i think harry styles is on it so I'm gonna watch that at midnight. It is 10 to midnight right now. I'm kind of getting sleepy, but also like I'm very much so invested in this book. I have the live stream for Coachella, but Harry Styles is singing at 11.35 p.m. PT. I don't know, that's like Pacific time. That's 7.30 my time. Question, do I stay up and listen to all of the artists and then be delirious for Harry Styles, but like still here? Or do I sleep and wake up? For 7.35 to watch Harry Styles? That is the question. I mean, it works out though, I'm doing a readathon. morning at half seven to watch Harry Styles perform at Coachella and I don't regret a thing. He literally sang two new songs. I am currently still in bed. Misty, Misty's on my lap, but I have just finished The Confidence of Wildflowers. So I finished my second book of this readathon. Oh my god, this book was actual emotional damage. Like I don't know how the hell the ending of this book actually happened. Like this was the saddest ending of a book that I've ever read and I kind of loved it and I don't know what that says about me, but like the more heartbreaking the 
romance, the more I love it. So I gave this one 5 out of 5 stars. I loved it so much. So when I actually started reading this morning, I went to go start my stopwatch and my stopwatch had reset, which is so frustrating because it now says I had zero minutes read when I know I had 3 hours 47 minutes read. So I'm just gonna let the stopwatch run for 3 hours 47 minutes so I can get back up to there and then I'll add on the time that I've read from today. This book was actually amazing. 5 out of 5 stars. I can't believe how quickly I read this. Like I read 80 pages in 38 minutes which is kind of crazy. Like I've never read that fast before. The writing style is so addictive and there was so much heartbreak in here and so many devastating and dark things but like it was such an amazing beautiful romance. I've so far read 628 pages in this readathon. So in like just over four hours I've read 628 pages which is super speed for me. Like that never ever happens. Thankfully my timer didn't cancel so even if the stopwatch thing doesn't work out I still know how much time I have left on this timer. So yeah, it is time to pick my next book. Honestly, I don't really know what I'm going to pick. I have my stack of books up here, but Misty's on my lap, so I can't like go through them. Okay, hey besties. It is now 4 p.m. I've just gotten out of the shower, but I haven't been speaking to you in a few hours because my mom's friend actually ended up calling out to see us. So I was just kind of like chatting and making teas and coffees and stuff. So I didn't actually get to read anything, but now I have a few hours to read, but I need to pick a new book. So I think I said earlier that I was going to move on to the fine print and I still still think I might. It's just off-putting how long it is because I do want to kind of finish a book in like one sitting. Like the serotonin of finishing a book in one sitting is unmatched. So I don't know if I should pick this up. I do also have Throttled by Lauren Asher, so the same author on this TBR, and I'm still mad at myself for getting the cover with the man on it. Like, why didn't I get the cute cartoon drawing cover? Like, why did I get the one with the man on it? The only bonus is that, to me, he looks a bit like Theo James, which I'm not mad about because Theo James chef's kiss. I don't think starting two series by the same author at the same time is a good idea so I'll probably just pick one of them and I'm leaning towards this one. I was also considering picking up All Your Perfects by Colleen Hoover because this is a very short book. It's just less than 300 pages and Colleen Hoover is extremely quick to read. I've been reading for four hours 25 minutes so far. I've got 20 hours left. 20 hours left. I don't know how I feel about that because that's a long fucking time. But yeah, I'm gonna stop talking. I'm gonna pick a book to read and I'm just gonna start it and see how far I can get into it. Hi besties. Okay, it is now 5.40 in the evening and I have a reading update on the fine print. I made it to chapter 10, which is page 85 and I'm really liking it so far. I do think it is a quick read and I hopefully will be able to finish it within this readathon, but I'm just not like completely obsessed with it just yet and I don't know if it's the fact that like I'm less than 100 pages in you know maybe the start is just a little bit slow but I don't know I'm just not completely hooked I don't really like either of the characters right now this basically follows Rowan and Zara and Rowan is like the director of Dreamland which is essentially like Disneyland or Disney World and his grandfather has just died and his grandfather was the owner of Dreamland so in order for Rowan to successfully take over the business he must like fix any issues within six months like that's his grandfather's condition but like the grandfather has said that he has to complete this task in order to become the director of it or the owner of it or something I don't really know we very much so have the grumpy sunshine trope he is a complete asshole and she is just like a ray of sunshine and usually I like the grumpy sunshine trope I really do but in this one, I'm just kind of finding her a little bit irritating at the moment. And again, I'm only 85 pages in. It doesn't mean that I'm going to think that the whole way through. But right now, I'm just finding her a tiny little bit irritating because like she's coming in to him. He's a billionaire. First of all, I don't care if he's an asshole, if he's a billionaire. But she like comes in and insults his whole business and tells him like, I think you're doing a shit job. And then she gets promoted because of that, which like I understand. But I feel like in reality, if you go in and insult your boss in the most demeaning way possible you're not gonna get a promotion babe you're gonna get fired i know that this is a romance book so i don't know why i'm being so particular about it i'm just not completely obsessed right now but i do still really like it so so let me check on the timer i did pause it a few minutes ago i've read for five hours and two minutes so far so right now i'm actually going to go for a walk when i get back i'll probably take a little break and then i will continue reading the fine print i kind of want to get to like page 200 today i think that would be my goal because i don't want to like burn myself out completely by reading too much at once. But I think if I could get to page 200 today, I would be really happy. Okay, so I just reached page 110. 
and I have a complaint. Basically, I can already see what like the conflict is going to be in this book. It's a fast read, I'll give it that, but I'm just not like 100% obsessed. Good morning, besties, and happy Easter. It is Easter Sunday today. I am just about to get collected to go out for Easter lunch, so I do have to make this update really quickly, but I actually forgot to give you a reading update last night, so I did continue reading the fine print. I've not finished it yet. I made it to chapter 28, which is page 226. I'm liking this book. It's nothing special. Nothing's jumping out at me. The little like miscommunication thing that I was talking about, that was already had, so maybe I'm hoping that there won't be like a third act break up. If there was another conflict, I think I'd be a bit mad, but also there's nothing really happening in this book. I'm just not completely in love with it. I don't know what it is. I think I'm just not vibing with either of the characters. Like they're nice, but they're nothing special. But let's check out the timers. So I have been reading for exactly seven hours so far in this readathon. So I have currently been reading this book for two hours, 35 minutes, and I've read 200 pages in two hours. So I do want to finish this book today. And sometimes I feel like the second half of books is shorter than the first half of books. I don't know if that makes sense to everybody, but it makes sense to me. The second half is shorter than the first half. So yeah, I've got 16 hours, 49 minutes left in this readathon. Hi besties. I have never been more relieved to make a reading update than I have in this moment. I have now finished The Fine Print by Lauren Asher. Unfortunately, me and this book, we didn't really get along how I thought we would get along. It's not that I disliked it, I did like it and there definitely were some scenes in here that I was like, oh my god, that's so cute. But more often than not, I was just irritated with both of these characters. I didn't really like either of them, but I wasn't really rooting for them even. Like, I think there was one too many conflicts in this book as well. Like the thing that I thought was going to be the main conflict actually was a conflict at like the like a third of the way through and then there was the main conflict as well that's in all romance books. I just think that that was too much. I don't think we needed two conflicts in this book. I just unfortunately think I had my expectations a bit too high for this book because everybody loves it. It's a hard one to rate because I didn't dislike it by any means but I also just didn't love it. It's not one that I'll be raving about. I do really want to read the sequel and I do have it on my wish list. Perhaps the storyline of the sequel will be more up my alley and some people that I've been talking to have said that they think I will love like the second book a bit more but we got to meet like the main character from the second book in this book because they're brothers and he's kind of an asshole and I just don't know if this is a thing that runs in the family that they're all assholes yeah I just wasn't feeling it I don't know what else to say about this book another thing that I will say that was good about this book is the representation our main character Zara has a sister with down syndrome and she is actively promoting diversity and more accessibility throughout this whole book and I think that was really nice and important and I loved to see that but other than that representation along with a few cute scenes in here it was just average so I think I'm gonna give this a three star possibly like 3.5 3.75 so I've been reading for nine hours 19 minutes okay so that book took me four hours 53 minutes to read which was a bit longer than I would have liked but also the fact that it is nearly 500 pages makes sense that it took me five hours to read. So I have got 14 and a half hours left in this fucking readathon. I'm gonna get through as many of those as I can today because I am losing steam. I am losing steam fast. I am so tired. I don't know how much more reading I'm capable of doing because so far I have read 1068 pages. Can I just stop the readathon here? Because I've read over a thousand pages in nine hours, but also I've dedicated myself to it now. I've got to follow through. I'm gonna stop talking right now. I'm gonna go pick out my next read. I will take you with me as I I go through the pile of books. Okay, so now it is time to pick my next read. I am gonna add the fine print to the red pile. This is actually a really good red pile. I'm proud of reading these two books because they're actually like quite thick books and then I also have Finley Donovan Knocks Him Dead on there but obviously I read that on audio. But here is the stack of books that I had on my TBR for this readathon that I haven't read yet. Because I'm kind of tired after reading a big book like this, I think I'm gonna move on to Sheets and then maybe Delicates and like get those two out of the way because they're graphic novels. And then I think I'm gonna go for Dirty Letters by Penelope Ward and V. Keeland because this one is like 280 pages and I feel like it would be a fast read. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take a little break by reading Sheets and then maybe Delicates and then start on this as my next read. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, besties, it is now 9.30 in the evening. I just finished Sheets by Brenna Thumler. I gave it five out of five stars simply because that's what I gave it the last time and I just kept the rating the same. It was really cute. I liked the art style. I liked the message it gave. It was really wholesome, really cute, kind of sad. And yeah, I just, I really liked it. So I've now been reading for 10 hours, 10 minutes. I am going to pick up another book this evening, I think, because I really want to just read more and like get more time in because we're literally under halfway through the readathon. But I decided to pick up Dirty Letters because it's 280 pages, but I read the first chapter, not even the full first chapter, actually. I was reading for three minutes and I was just getting kind of stressed because the main character was having panic attacks and stuff. And it was just kind of making me anxious reading about somebody being anxious. So I... I am putting this down for now but right now I think I'm gonna pick up All Your Perfects by Colleen Hoover because it's the next shortest book that I had. It took me 47 minutes to read Sheets. I have a coffee here in my Ursula mug that my mom made me so I am going to go read. Also my mom made the coffee, not the mug. The Disney store made the mug. This is how we read now. Misty is here. I'm on page 54. It's good so far. Um, it's very sad, but not in like the typical Colleen Hoover way. It's just, it's just kind of depressing, but I'll keep with it because it's a short book. Hi besties. This is a hate post for Apple because once again, they reset my stopwatch to 000. They are not supportive of this readathon. But anyways, I do have a screenshot of the last time that I was reading and I was at 10 hours, 10 minutes of reading. So I'll be able to, you know, continue on from there. But I wanted to give you a reading update because the last time I spoke to you, I was starting All Your Perfects, I think. I am currently 100 pages into this, which is a third of the way through. There's only 300 pages in this. Not really liking it, honestly. This is not my favorite coho so far. I know that Colleen Hoover's books are usually heartbreaking. I'm aware of that, but sometimes it's like just a heartbreaking romance, but this is just kind of sad. It is bringing down the vibe of this readathon. So today I actually started a new book on my Kindle. I started Jump by Macaulay Smeltzer. I'm just obsessed with anything Macaulay Smeltzer since I read The Confidence of Wildflowers, but I decided to start this because it's a novella so it's like 150 pages I think and it is a 90s romance and I don't know why I never thought to look for these before I never thought that this was a thing before because 90s rom-coms best films ever like I would literally watch those one after the other 24 7 why didn't I think to look for that in book form okay so I am loving this book I'm halfway through I am 100% going to finish that today because I'm so obsessed and then I might also try to finish this before I go to bed I am fairly tired because I've just gotten home honestly I might just put it down until I'm feeling the mood to pick it back up again but I got some really exciting book mail today because I got a gift and I didn't actually end up opening it on camera because I had to go so quickly this morning. But I got Layla by Colleen Hoover and the amazing Selena sent this to me. Thank you so much, Selena. I was so shocked to get this and this is just the nicest thing ever. Thank you so much, Selena. This actually made my day. She said, hey Em, I've been loving your videos lately and binging your readathons for reading motivation. I hope you enjoy Layla. Have a great day from Selena. Thank you so much, Bestie. Honestly, this made my day and I am definitely working my way through Coho's backlist but also I wanted to welcome a new member of this family meet Camden honestly I would not have picked the name Camden for you but it's the name that he was given it says it on his little tag and I just kind of decided to go for it like Cammy you know that's a cute name today I went to this big toy shop with my sisters and we were shopping for some gifts for them and then a gift for our cousin as well. But naturally, like the child I am, I also came out of the shop with a new addition to my family. But it is so cute because on his little tag, it says that he wants to be a dental hygienist. That's his dream. And he loves hiking with his friends. Now, if I had read that before I bought you, I don't know if we would have been a good match because I neither like hiking or dentists, but welcome to the family, Cami. But yeah, nonetheless, I love him. That is all I have to say for right now. I'll come back to you later.
Okay besties, it is now a couple days later and I'm finally coming on here to end out this readathon vlog. I didn't do as many talking updates towards the end because I already had an hour's worth of footage from like the first couple days. So I didn't really do as many talking updates but I did manage to start and finish It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey and I gave it a 4.5 star. Let me just look at the timer because this has been a long time coming. I finished the book with 14 minutes 14 seconds left. I'm counting this readathon as done. I finally finished this book with 14 minutes to spare so I'm gonna just count that because I'm sure there was 14 minutes in here where I wasn't on the timer. So I finally finished this 24-hour readathon vlog. I had so much fun doing this vlog and I'm just going to wrap up everything I read so that you can just see how many pages I read and how many books I read. This was more of like a challenge to see how much I was physically able to read in a 24-hour period, more so than like your typical 24-hour readathon. And I don't think I'll be doing this challenge for another while because it does take a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of reading. So I will probably go back to my normal 24-hour readathon for the next few times but I still had a lot of fun and like this is the stack of books that I managed to read in a 24-hour period which I'm so so happy with plus two other books that I don't have the physical copies of so I'm really really proud of how much I managed to read this method of a 24-hour readathon definitely makes you read a lot more and also since I started this readathon I have not opened TikTok like I was just feeling very burnt out with TikTok I was kind of just like kept scrolling and I would get sucked in for hours and I haven't opened the app of TikTok for the whole duration of this readathon which went on like about a week and I'm really really proud of that so hopefully I can keep that habit up for the next while anyways but let me quickly wrap up the books that I read during this readathon and like how many pages I read okay so I started out with reading Finley Donovan Knocks Him Dead which I gave a 3.5 stars and that was 368 pages then I read The Confidence of Wildflowers which is a new favorite of mine I gave this a 5 out of 5 star I read 280 pages of this during this readathon I had already read like a little bit in then I read Sheets by Brenna Thumler which I gave a four star to and this was 238 pages. Then I also read Delicates by Brenna Thumbler which I didn't like as much. I gave this a three star and this was 317 pages. Then I read the entirety of the fine print which I did like. I was kind of between giving a three or a four. Honestly I'm kind of giving it like a 3.5 because I did like it. It just wasn't exactly what I was expecting. So I read the entirety of this book which was 440 pages. Then I read a novella by Macaulay Smeltzer as well. I read Jump which was 100 seven pages and I gave this a five out of five stars oh my god I loved it so much then I decided to pick up All Your Perfects by Colleen Hoover I didn't actually finish this one because I ended up putting it down for other books I'm not like full on DNFing it like I will finish it but for right now it's just not what I want to read and I put it down but I did read 104 pages of this and then finally I read the entirety of It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey which I'm giving 4.5 out of five stars and I actually have an exclusive reading vlog for this up on my Patreon if you do want to watch and see my full thoughts on this because I didn't really give that many thoughts on this book in this vlog but yeah 4.5 stars and this was 385 pages. So in total I finished seven whole books and I also started an eighth book so if you add up all those pages in total I read 2,239 pages in 24 hours. I think that's a personal record for me honestly and like the books that I read were quite big books as well like they were all like 300-400 pages but yeah this was such a fun vlog to film I really had a great time so yeah I hope you enjoyed this vlog let me know down in the comments if you did enjoy it if you watch to the end comment some like sea themed emojis like you know the ocean a fish any sea themed emoji that you want the more the merrier once again i will leave all my links down in the description box to all my social media my amazon wishlist and also my patreon if you want some exclusive content from me we are going to be buddy reading marriage for one by ella mays in the month of may so you'll be getting an exclusive reading vlog for this as well so yeah all those links will be in the description box but yeah thank you so so much for watching stay amazing stay kind and i'll see you in the next video bye guys